working on my cardio It's perfect with this audio You better call an audible Celebrate this victory win It's so applaudable I don't need the audience here Cause this is all I know Crossover fade away We living in a great time Better get your weight up Or get ate up at the baseline This'll be the jump off Started with a jump ball Throw the alley up off to my crew Now that's a duck ball Two points and one You about to foul out Free throw all net Everybody wow out I can let my game talk you were just a loud mouth We can get the ring with the whole team And then the crowd shout Hello again Irish fans and welcome to this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Basketball with Mike Bray I'm Jack Nolan joined as always by the head coach of the Fighting Irish and coach it was a tough week for your team. A two-game road trip against two talented ranked opponents in Virginia Tech and Virginia and the home teams won both games. Yeah Jack we um we could not put together 40 minutes in either Blacksburg or Charlottesville against really good teams. And, you know, we're learning the hard way against real good teams. You got to play 40 minutes or you're not going to have a shot. Now you remain without a win in ACC play. It's not a position that you want to be in, but not one you were unfamiliar with either. And I was thinking the other day about 2009, your Irish lost seven straight in January and February, and people were wondering if you were ever going to pull out of it. Not only did you rally, you ended up making it to the championship game of the NIT that year. And that's just one example of you being in this situation and your teams being in this situation and never giving up and rallying before the season ends. Well, I think as a coach, you almost anticipate something like this in a season. You know, you're having to work yourself out of crisis. There's a lot of crisis management in coaching. And in my 21 years, as you mentioned, we've rotated where our backs are flat out against the wall. Last year, a little bit at two and six in the league after Florida State, and then going nine and four. And we're there, you know, we, we need to generate some momentum and our goal is to get it started against Boston College. Folks, when we come back, we'll take you to Blacksburg, where the Irish got off to a terrific start against the then 19th Ranch Hokies. You're watching Inside Notre Dame Basketball, presented by the experts at TireRack.com. It's time now for our game breakdown, brought to you by our friends at Meyer. Mike, your teams have always played well at Castle Coliseum in Blacksburg, and your visit this past Sunday was no different. At one point, your guys were hitting 70% of their shots from the floor and finished the first half of the game at 55%. Uh, we got off to a great start offensively, and you always love to do that on the road, especially against a really good team. You got 42 points at halftime, and you're feeling, God, if you can score in the mid-70s, that may be enough to hold off a really good team. But I thought Virginia Tech's defense just totally swarmed us and shut us down in the second half, and, and we had no answers. Now, you did not start Dane Goodwin in this game, but you inserted him into the game just two minutes in, and boy, was he terrific, scoring 10 of his 12 points in the game in the first half. Yeah, I thought, you know, we're just trying to get him going. You know, he had a tough stretch. He's overall, he's been very good for us. Uh, and so sometimes you just bring a guy off the bench to kind of to jump start him, and, 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 it, and it helped us in that sense. It worked for us. You took your first six-point lead of the game on a three-point bucket by Cormac Ryan, followed by a steal and a conventional three-point play by Prentice Hub. You were really rolling at this point. Yeah, you know, there's this this team has teased us at times, Jack. You know, we have seen signs of it in a game and signs of it in practice. Again, we have flat out thrown them to the wolves with the schedule against very, very good teams. But for us really to beat anybody, we're going to have to do that closer to 40 minutes, not 20. Now, after those two buckets, Nate Leshevsky followed with back-to-back -back buckets. But the Hokies really defended him well. He only got four shots in the first half, and he made three of them. You know, they really switched everything in the second half, especially. That's, uh, you know, where they were really aware of him. But I love what he did. He, he wasn't getting three-point looks. He drove the ball and got to the foul line and found ways to score. And that's the one thing with his improved physical strength. He can get to the basket and take a hit uh, and, and, and can get three-point plays now. He did end up as your leading scorer with 17 points. You also got Trey Wirtz 
back for this game, a little ahead of schedule, but clearly he wasn't 100% recovered from the ankle sprain. He hit a big three right away, though, to give you another six-point lead at the 1240 mark, and that bucket ended a stretch. You said the, the guys teased you a little bit. You had made eight straight shots at that point. Yeah, we have some offensive firepower at times. We really do. And Trey Wirtz is very important for us moving forward. Again, um, between getting him back from Virginia Tech and him finding his rhythm in the second half, really the whole game against Virginia, I hope we found a confident guard who, who can really help us. Now, I know one of your uh, points to the team before the game was get out guys and run on these guys. And you did. You won fast break points in this game 10-2. Well, I think, you know, when we can get out and get down the floor and not play against any set defense, you know, that, that helps us. But, but we have not been able to get enough stops, defensive rebounds and outlets. We end up taking the ball out of bounds too much and we're not able to run as much that way. So that's our challenge the second half of this season. I know one of your hopes for this year was for the veteran Nick Jogo to step up and start playing a regular role in the rotation. He certainly has, and he was in part responsible for a great sequence late in the half. He blocks a shot on the defensive end and then gets a hoop on the other end when he flies through the air to grab an offensive rebound and then throws it in the hoop without touching the ground. He, um... I, I, I'm so pleased, and, and and we've had a tough year to date, but Nick Jogo is giving us everything he can give us, understands his role, and he's been a good voice and a leader in a tough time. You know, it's easy to be a captain and a leader when you're eight and three, but when you're three and eight and searching, that voice is important, and I've really appreciated his maturity and trying to pick up the young guys when they're hanging their heads. We'll be back with more on this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Basketball right after this. So after the 77-63 loss to Virginia Tech, you don't come home, you get a good night's sleep in Blacksburg, and then you head on up to Charlottesville for a rematch with a ranked Virginia team, and that pack line defense, always a challenge. But I thought it was Virginia coming out and shooting the lights out early, led by seven foot one at center Jay Huff, who can hit the three. He doesn't take many. He hit the first one of the game, ended up hitting a career high four in the first half. And I thought that really set the tone and gave Virginia control of the game. Well, I don't know if you get a good night's sleep in Blacksburg the way the second half went, but you and I have been there before, and I've been down that road before. Having said that, um, yes, Virginia got off to such a great offensive start shooting the basketball. A lot of them were deep shots. Um, you know, you want, you know, that the center shooting threes is something maybe you want to give up. Um, but I don't know if we challenged enough of them. Now, having said all that, they're shooting well. I thought our offense and our movement was really good and we got good looks. And But when you don't make any of them, and they make almost all of them in the first 10 minutes, boy, are you digging out of a hole, which is what we had to do then the rest of the game. And the guy who kept you in it in the first half was the guy who made his looks because they were a lot closer to the basket, Jawan Durham. He had 10 points four rebounds and a couple of steals. And just as important as the points you needed him, he's got a rebound. Some games he doesn't, this game he did. Well, we've challenged him to do that. I mean, I think that's an area where he can be better. And, and he and I talked about that um, actually in between the Virginia Tech and Virginia game. I said, you know, I'm gonna put you back there and I'm not gonna have you out chasing ball screens as much. If you're back in there, you, you got a rebound for us. And I think Nate has stuck his nose in there the most consistently rebounding wise, but we've not had another rebounder. Actually, Dane and Cormac maybe have been our second best rebounders. And, and you know, it's really telling when you lose a Mooney who just got everything. And now, you know, we're really struggling to do that against very good teams. But but again, Jawan should get five, six, seven rebounds. He's playing enough minutes to do that, and, and we, we need him to do that. Another bright spot was the play of Trey Wirtz coming off the sprained ankle. He was clearly still hobbled against Virginia Tech. You mentioned he still sore, but it looks like he's back to playing at 100%. He hit a bunch of tough shots, ended up with 13 points and four assists. He's a great combo guard for you. 
he just, you know, he's just a playmaking guard and he made shots and scored. But I thought some of his passes and how he moved the ball, he understands how we play. And if you could get him, Cormac, and Prentice clicking, because they're three playmaking guards that all have the ability to score. If we could get those three clicking more consistently, I think we could be really fun. But we have not been able, for a lot of different reasons, to to find that yet. Now, as well as Virginia shot it in the first half, they shot it even better in the second half. 57% while again hitting 50% from three. They took a 24-point lead, but but here's where you kind of jumped on me politely in the post-game radio interview. No, 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 no. I want to talk about bright spots because maybe the biggest one was the way Cormac Ryan clicked better than he ever has in the second half of this game. He cut the lead down to 10 on a three-point play late in the game, finished with a team high, 16 points. He's never looked better for you on offense than he did in the second half against the best defense in the ACC. And and even though we weren't probably going to come back and win, um, for him to have some success offensively and see the ball go in, I think was really important. And it's funny, I turned to Rod Belanis and I said, has Cormac even scored yet? And we ran a little set. He knocked a three down like two seconds later. And and and, uh, and then he got on a run. And and so uh, again, I, I think I think he's turned down some good shots um, and, and and dribbled a little too much at times. We want him to catch and shoot um, when he has just an okay window because he's got a great stroke. Uh, again, we we need him to be uh, give us some offensive punch and and I'm hoping you know he found a a flow uh, as did Trey uh, in in the game and and Cormac in the second half that's what I'm hoping we grab out of a tough afternoon in Charlottesville so the 18th ranked Cavaliers beat the Irish 80 to 68 when we come back coach takes control of the video on this week's edition of Irish Intel It's time now for Irish Intel. This is the segment of our show each week where we give control of the video to Coach Bray as we break down some of the best plays from the previous week of action. Coach, our first play this week involves Cormac Ryan and Nate Leshesky executing a perfect pick and roll in the first half of the game at Virginia Tech. Well, the the neat thing here is that uh, Cormac really is in the point guard role and Prentice is getting off the ball and getting to the corner. And we like Cormac making decisions, but, you know, it's a great read. Nate has gotten a lot of this stuff when he really rolls hard and cuts hard and feels that. Uh, And we have guards that can find him in Cormac right here, Trey, and certainly Prentice. Mike, our next play involves a guy who has really stepped up this season the way you want him to. Well, I've been so thrilled. Nick Jogo is playing his role, you know, to the maximum. And he is a really good defender. Uh, individually as he is here. That's just a big time play to stay in front and then go up and get the block. But he's a great team defender as well. And then here on the offensive end, he knows who he is. He, he lets the game come to him. He doesn't force things. I think Nick Jogo is playing the best of anybody on our team, quite frankly, right now. Mike, Trey Wirtz has impressed everybody with his offensive prowess in terms of scoring the basketball through a perfect alley-oop pass to Nate Leshesky. Well, I, you know, in a tough afternoon, Trey Wirtz finding his rhythm, I, I think, is really important, and I thought he did. He's healthy. He drives this gap right here. And then just have the vision to throw over the top right there. Again, uh, in a tough afternoon, if Trey Wirtz is feeling better about himself and we can jumpstart him to being a double-figure scorer and a four-assist guy, that's good for us. We'll be back with more on this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Basketball right after this. Our friends at Tire Rack also sponsor our weekly player interview. And joining us now is Irish junior guard Cormac Ryan. Cormac is in his second year with the Irish after transferring from Stanford. And this is his first year playing in games for Notre Dame. It was a pretty good week for Cormac. 26 points against Virginia Tech in Virginia with 11 rebounds, four assists, and three steals. And Mike, I know you really like what you saw from Cormac in the second half against Virginia when he scored all of his season-high 16 points. 
Well, the one thing about about him is he is a competitor, and and really, in a lot of ways, he's been our best perimeter defender. Carmack, welcome to the Mike Bray Show. What's been the biggest adjustment from going to just playing and leading in practice to getting back on the floor in games in the ACC? Yeah, I mean, I think kind of like what Coach said, just finding rhythm um, and just continuing to be aggressive, um, you know, no matter what's going on in the game. Um, you know, I think continuing to rely on, you know, my teammates and trying to make the right play at all times and just trusting, you know, my instincts and, you know, the, the chemistry that we have on this team is, is good and is, is a big part of it. And so I think just continuing to trust in that and, and our abilities uh, will we'll, we'll kind of carry it. And certainly, Cormac, coming out of high school, even players are a little bit of a question mark because you haven't played at a high level. But you were a starter at Stanford, and you had a lot of choices. People had seen for sure what you could do. Butler, Davidson, Gonzaga, Marquette, Northwestern, Penn, Texas, Villanova, Virginia, Yale. Boy, you had a lot of choices. Why'd you pick Notre Dame? Um, you know, I think it was, like you said, I think it was a kind of a no-brainer. I think the style of play, um, the culture of the team that I got a sense from talking to the guys and also just being on campus and talking with coach and the staff. Um, you know, it just seemed like it was a real family culture. Um, and that was kind of what I was looking for. Um, and then in addition, like, you know, obviously it's a great academic school and, and the style of play is something that I think fit my game and, you know, was uh, made, made the decision pretty easy. And final question, free throw shooting competition. Who wins? You or Coach Bray? Coach did hit one the other day in practice, I got to say, but I, I I would have to go with myself, hopefully. I hope so, too. Cormac, great job. Thank you for the time today. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. Thanks, Cormac. We'll be back with more on this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Basketball right after this. Mike, another interesting and challenging week on tap for the Irish this week, beginning with a Saturday afternoon home game with longtime rival Boston College. And the Eagles are playing their best basketball of the year right now. They really are, Jack. Make 18 threes the other night against Miami. They'll come into South Bend very confident. All our games have been down to the wire. Um, we've gotten the better of them over time in the ACC, but uh, they're a really skilled offensive group. And given where we are defensively right now, you know, I have my concerns. Then you head to Washington, D.C. for a game with Howard on Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And, and Mike, I'm not sure you've ever played a game during your tenure where, in all honesty, whoever wins it doesn't really matter. The game has a much bigger importance than wins and losses. But the neat thing about this is <clears throat> we talked about, you know, how do you make a difference? We've talked about all these issues with our team um, and, and, and what's going on in the world. And we got in with the Howard team and we got involved with the initiative When We All Vote. They registered themselves. They recruited other people to register to vote. And I told them, I said, fellas, I think you're part of the change because more people voted than ever before in this last election. And there has been a change. And, and so, I, I, you know, this is kind of the culmination of that. I love the idea of a Power Five school and our university playing on the campus of a historically black college and university. That just does not happen. I think it should happen more, quite frankly. But there's a, I think there's a message here uh, to be Notre Dame, our university, to be on the Howard campus, uh, maybe the most famous of uh, historically black colleges and universities on MLK Day. I think it's a great educational experience for our players. And um, I hope they'll look back 10 years when they come to reunion and go, coach, that was an unbelievable experience that we did that. Folks, that will do it for this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Basketball with Mike Bray. Coach and I will return next week to break down all the highlights of the Boston College and Howard Games. Until then, for Coach Bray, I'm Jack Nolan. Thanks so much for watching. Stay safe, and as always, go Irish.